This is part two from my other lesson about the warfare of Israel. I want to start by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rikakadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles and teachers of great millstone that I learned from. And salutations to the elect out there. Uh, let's continue at verse 15. Thus shalt thou do unto all the cities which are very far off from, from thee. Which are not of the cities of these nations, but of these cities, but the cities of these people, which those cities were very wicked, doing abominable things, which the Lord thy God doeth give thee for an inheritance. Yeah, because those are heathen nations, and they will be inheritance for Israel. You know, servants and handmaids and whatnot. Thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. You see. So we should utterly destroy them. But thou shalt utterly destroy, <laughs> thou shalt utterly destroy, namely the Hivites, I mean the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God have commanded thee. That they, that they teach you not to do after all their abominations which they have done unto their gods you see so should ye sin so should ye sin against the lord so ye so should ye sin against the lord your god you see and the way and the only way we were able to take these nations down that it lists right here let me get a precept because like i mentioned in the previous lesson that angel that right hand, that right arm, which was sent by the Most High to help us. His right arm, which is Yahweh Shai. It's his Psalms 44 and 3. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, you see. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thy arm and thy light and the light of thy countenance. Because thou hast a favor unto them, you see. So the Most High's right hand. Has saved us, you see. Let's go get some precepts on the right hand. Well, no, I mentioned it in the in part one, so you can go and watch part one. Let's keep reading. All right, verse nineteen. When thou shalt besiege a city a long time, and making war against it, to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them. For they, for thou mayest eat of them, and thou shalt not cut them down. For the tree of the field is man's life. To employ them in the siege. You see? So, because in the land, you know, some of those trees and things will be, will be considered, you know, f food for us. And just like when uh, Moses sent spies to go spy out the land, I think they, in the Old Testament, I think, you know, they cut, when they mentioned he mentioned them cutting, cutting down one of the trees, and bringing back you know fruits from the tree. So when you when Israel went to besiege the city for a long time, as it lists right here, and they can use the trees for meat for fruit you know to eat, because it they went to war for a long time. Only the trees which thou knowest that they be not trees for meat. Let me read it again. Only the trees which thou knowest that they be not trees for meat, thou shalt destroy and cut down, cut them down, and thou shalt build bulwarks against the city that maketh war with thee until it be subdued. And there you go. And also, in Deuteronomy, it mentions how if you see among the captives a beautiful woman, when thou goest forth to war, let me get that. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Go to Deuteronomy 21. Let's go over here. Let's go over here tonight. Well, let's see. Deuteronomy 21. Let's start at 10. Deuteronomy 21 and 10. Yeah, 21 and 10. When thou goest forth to war against thy enemies, and the Lord thy God hath delivered them into thy hands, and thou hast taken them captive 
And thou see, seest among the captives a beautiful woman, and have a desire unto her, that thou wouldest have her to thy wife. Then thou shalt bring her home to thy house, and she shall shave her hair and pare her nails, and, shall sh and, and she shall put off the raiment of her captivity from off her, and shall remain in thy house, and bewail her father and her mother a full month. And after that, thou shalt go in unto her, and be her husband, and she shall be thy wife. You see? So when we went to war, and we seen among the captives a beautiful woman and have a desire to her, we were able to take her. And yeah, she could be of the other nations. Sure could. She just didn't have to be an Israelite, because it goes back to the seed. If you're an Israelite man, and you have a child by a heathen woman, your child is still an Israelite. Alright, and that'll be it for this lesson, but I plan on doing more. Shalom.